In a patient with undifferentiated hypotension, focused assessment using point of care ultrasonography aids in diagnosis and management. Ultrasound assessment of the heart, lungs, inferior vena cava, and limited evaluation of the abdomen is helpful in this setting. In this video, we will go over the characteristic findings or the so-called sonographic footprints of the major types of shock. In real life, however, we must be careful with pre-existing imaging abnormalities and simultaneous presence of multiple disease states. In hypovolemic shock, the heart tries to pump harder to compensate for the lost circulating volume. For example, in this parasternal short axis view obtained from a patient with acute blood loss, you can note how hyperdynamic the heart is. And also note that the papillary muscles are coming so close as if they are kissing each other. That's why the expression kissing papillary muscles is often used to indicate a hyperdynamic heart. Now, if you take a look at the inferior vena cava of this patient with hypovolemia, it is very small and almost completely collapsible with inspiration. That is suggestive of low right atrial pressure, typically less than 3 mm mercury. And the lung ultrasound typically shows A lines, suggestive of a normally aerated lung. Now let's take a look at the ultrasound findings in cardiogenic shock. On the left hand side of the slide, you can see a normal heart with normal left ventricular systolic function where the LV walls thicken and come close to each other by at least 30% during systole. And in the diastole, the mitral wall leaflets open completely. And as you can see here, the anterior mitral wall leaflet almost touches the interventricular septum. That's normal finding. This right image of the parasternal long axis view was obtained from a patient with cardiogenic shock. Note that the LV walls are not thickening or moving as much and the mitral wall leaflets are barely opening. That suggests to have severely reduced LV systolic function. The inferior vena cava of this patient is full or plethoric and is not significantly collapsing with respiration. That suggests to have high right atrial pressure. And the lung ultrasound on the right side here shows B line pattern that is presence of three or more B lines per rib interspace. And when the B line pattern is diffuse, it's suggestive of cardiogenic pulmonary edema in this case. Unlike the patient with hypovolemia, this patient with hypotension does not benefit from intravenous fluids. Instead, we have to give diuretics and evaluate for ionotropic therapy. Now coming to the obstructive shock, this is a patient with pulmonary embolism. In this parasternal short axis view, note that the right ventricle is significantly enlarged, pushing on the left ventricle. Because of this pressure, the interventricular septum flattens and the left ventricle appears like the letter D instead of its original circular shape. This is called the D sign. Like the previous patient with cardiogenic shock, this hypotensive patient with obstructive shock also wouldn't benefit from fluids. If you give fluids to this patient, they are going to go to the right side of the heart, further compressing the left ventricle, resulting in decreased cardiac output, which ultimately results in hemodynamic collapse. Here is another example of obstructive shock that is pericardial effusion. Note the anechoic band of fluid around the heart in this tilted apical four chamber and parasternal short axis views. This fluid will compromise the cardiac function and decrease the cardiac output, resulting in hemodynamic collapse. So this patient with hypotension also doesn't benefit from fluids, but would rather benefit from timely pericardiosynthesis. Now, the distributive shock can be a little tricky because it can present with varied focus findings. For example, a patient who is initially hypovolemic can present with hyperdynamic heart with decreased cardiac output, while many patients present with hyperdynamic heart with increased cardiac output because of severe peripheral vasodilation that occurs in septic shock. On the other hand, a subset of patients might also present with decreased cardiac function if the septic cardiomyopathy develops. Similarly, IVC can range anywhere from completely collapsible to plethoric. And lungs are typically negative for diffuse B lines, unlike cardiogenic pulmonary edema. But if you are dealing with a patient with ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, you can still find uh, B lines distributed all over. 
and you may see low bar consolidations or subpleural consolidations if pneumonia is the cause of sepsis. In addition, limited scanning of the abdomen might reveal an intraabdominal source of sepsis. In these patients, fluids still work in the initial phase, but they can quickly go into congestive state, especially if kidneys start to fail. Here is an example of low bar pneumonia. That means the lung above the diaphragm is hepatized or looks like liver. You can see that there are small white dots uh, within the consolidated lung. These are air bronchograms. And as these are moving with respiration, they're called dynamic air bronchograms. The importance of knowing this finding is that even atelectatic lung or the collapsed lung has these bronchograms, but typically they do not move. That's why they are called static air bronchograms. However, note that though dynamic air bronchograms are specific for pneumonia, pneumonia can also have static air bronchograms. Here is an example of subpleural consolidations in a patient with uh, viral pneumonia. As we slide down the transducer, note that there are small consolidated areas appearing just below the pleural line separated from the surrounding healthy lung by a shredded margin that's called the shred sign. And the image was obtained using a linear transducer because uh, it offers better resolution while imaging superficial structures. This is an example of pyonephrosis or pus in the collecting system of the kidney acting as an intraabdominal source of sepsis. The arrow points to the echogenic material or the pus while you can also see the surrounding black things that, which corresponds to hydronephrosis caused because of the urine blockage uh, by the pus. In these images obtained from a patient with septic shock, you can see that there is bilateral moderate to severe hydronephrosis. And when you scan the bladder, you find a huge stone that is followed by acoustic shadowing and surrounded by debris. So this bladder was most likely acting as an idus for infection and the likely cause of sepsis in this patient. Here is an example of acute cholecystitis, which can be a potential source of sepsis. Observe carefully at the arrow and you will see a hyperechoic structure followed by a shadow, which corresponds to a stone in the gallbladder neck. Also note that the operator here is exerting pressure on the gallbladder to elicit sonographic Murphy sign. I hope the video is helpful. Essentially, the take home point is that fluids do not benefit every patient with hypotension. And do watch the first part for a better understanding of pathophysiology of individual types of shock. Thank you.